This video is all about cherry raw materials and perfumery. Now, the aim of this video is quite simply for me to talk a little bit about the raw materials which I put in the cherry category and talk about them to you guys so that you know exactly what kind of things you might want to go and get for yourself if you're looking to make a cherry accord or a cherry perfume. So, cherry raw materials. Now, I myself, in my own categorization system for my raw materials, currently have about six or so raw materials in the cherry category. And my cherry category is kind of like a subcategory of my fruity category. And well, I put them in this category because I think they all smell pretty much like cherry to some degree. So in this video, I'm simply gonna go over those raw materials, let you guys know what they smell like, let you guys know a little bit about how they can be used. And hopefully by the end of it, you should have a little bit of an idea if you wanna make, as I say, your own cherry perfume or cherry accord, um, how you can go about doing that. Now, before we begin, I will say that cherry is a pretty popular note in perfumery. I like it myself, and in fact, I know that you guys like it because I've had DMs from some of you guys on Instagram about making cherry accords, and I've also had comments on YouTube about how to make cherry accords, cherry smells, that kind of thing. Now, I've got this perfume here, which is one of my favorite perfumes of all time, which is La Petite Robe Noire by Guerlain. And this perfume features a cherry note. I won't spray it because we're about to smell the raw materials, but this uh, perfume has a clear cherry note in it and it really smells nice. So if, you're, if you like your perfumes and you're looking for a cherry perfume, this is one I would recommend. There's also Lost Cherry by Tom Ford. Now I haven't smelled this one myself, but I know that this one's quite popular, or at least Tom Ford in general are quite popular with some of you fragrance enthusiasts. So that could be another one to check out. And of course, what would this video be without a shameless plug? You've also got my own cherry fragrance called Moonlight Harvest. This fragrance features cherry, apple, and wheat. It's quite an autumnal fragrance. And it's part of my brand, Zero. If you wanna read more about that, you can go and check out the story behind it on my website, uh, www.zero.ai, link in the description. And I'm also doing a shipment for you guys in North America, so USA and Canada customers. Pre-orders for that are still open until the end of this week. So if you're interested in picking up my Moonlight Harvest or any other one of my perfumes, then you've got until the end of the week to put in a pre-order. Right, so let's talk about cherry raw materials. Now, one of my favorite ones I've got right here is something called anisaldehyde. Now, this one I originally discovered because it came in my starter kit from Pell Wool, which I originally bought when I started perfumery back in 2019 properly. That was my first lot of synthetics. And I remember anisaldehyde being one of my favorite smells straight away. I've got it here on a scent strip. And what it smells like is, well, I would say firstly you get a cherry smell, but it's this lovely mixture of kind of cherry notes, marzipan notes, slight hay-like notes, and it just smells kind of sweet, fruity, um, a little bit gourmand, and it's also quite powerful as well. I find that even at a low dilution, this note does tend to kind of have quite a big effect in your, you know, firstly on its own on the scent strip, but also in your compositions. Now, anisaldehyde is restricted by the IFRA, and last year the restriction was 0.21%, which is quite low. Though even at that level, it had quite a noticeable impact on your perfumes. However, I just went and checked again at the time of recording of this video, late 2023, and it seems as though the IFRA have just released a new amendment, increasing that restriction to 1.4%, which honestly is a pretty high level. Uh, I don't think you'd probably want to use more than that anyway. So that is good news. Now it lasts a fair amount of time as well. I would say it's probably a mid note, potentially even a mid to base note. So, you know, it lasts a fair amount of time, especially when a lot of fruity notes are top notes. And for all of these reasons added together, this makes anisaldehyde one of my top rated cherry raw materials. The next raw material I've got here is benzaldehyde. And this is probably the most widely known and most widely used cherry raw material in perfumery. This one, again, is one that I use in my Moonlight Harvest perfume. And because I use that and I've got a lot of the stock, I've actually gone and made that available for sale on my website, The Fragrance Foundry. So if you're in the UK and you're looking to pick up some benzaldehyde, then feel free to head on over to www.thefragrancefoundry.com or .co.uk and you can go and get that there. Now benzaldehyde is another one restricted by the IFRA and last time I checked it was 0.25% in your final formula, which sounds quite low. But this stuff is really, really strong. And actually, if you put that much in your perfume, usually you'll find the whole perfume just smells like cherry after that. So when you go to smell it, I would say the smell of benzaldehyde is somewhere between cherry and almonds. So if you think of the smell of say a cherry Bakewell tart or common say cherry sweets, or if you've ever had cherry cola, it's essentially the same molecule benzaldehyde. They actually go and use that as a flavoring as well as a fragrance. 
So pretty much that classic cherry uh, food flavoring smell that you may be used to, that is what Benzahada had smells like. Now you can put this in your perfumes and it's very powerful, it gives you a lot of impact, but it's also very much a top note. So it's very volatile, it all evaporates straight away. And essentially what it does is when you spray your perfume, it kind of fills the room um, and it gives you this initial blast of this kind of classic cherry smell. Now, if you're making a cherry accord or you want a cherry perfume, this one I think is almost indispensable. This is just kind of the most basic cherry note that you'd want to go and use. And it's also really cheap, which means, I mean, it's widely found. You can pretty much get it everywhere. It's pretty cheap, so it's not really going to add on to the cost of your perfume too much, but it just gives you a really solid cherry note. Now, while Benzaldehyde is very good, some of the downsides are if you only use it on its own, it doesn't necessarily smell so natural. It can smell a bit of that synthetic cherry flavoring. So I would go and normally recommend making your own accord where you've got some benzaldehyde to give it that really nice, strong, juicy cherry smell, but you then go and mix it with other things to go and make it smell more natural and more like a real cherry and less like a synthetic cherry. And the other thing is because it's a top note, it's not gonna last very long. On the scent strip, this probably only lasts around half an hour to an hour, so it's very much a top note. And that means if you want the cherry note to last a bit longer into your fragrance, then you're gonna have to include some of the other cherry raw materials from this video in your cherry accord. Once again, if you're in the UK and you're looking to pick up some benzaldehyde, then you can go and find it on the Fragrance Foundry website. Right then, so next we have one for those of you guys who are really looking to extend that cherry note deep and long into the base note. This one is called Veratraldehyde. Now this one isn't strictly speaking a pure cherry note. To me, this one smells a bit like a mixture between vanilla and cherry. And if you go and look at the structure, the structure of the actual molecule is quite similar to both benzaldehyde, that cherry smelling molecule, and vanillin, that vanilla smelling aroma chemical that's really classic, used all over the place. I mentioned it in my uh, beginner's video. So veratraldehyde is a very interesting one because it lasts a very long time, just like vanillin, but it also has a cherry facet to it. So if you want to use kind of a cherry note, but you want it to last a bit longer into the base, then I recommend adding some veratraldehyde to your perfume. Now the only thing with veratraldehyde is you need to be careful because it can provide quite intense sweetness because of its similarity to vanillin. Because of that reason, I would recommend don't dose it necessarily too high, but at the same time, if you want to dose it highly, you can, just be aware. Right, so nextly, I've got another one here called heliotropin diethyl acetal. Now, heliotropin is a classic note used in perfumery, and it's used for often some kind of floral notes, because heliotrope is a flower, and therefore to make a heliotrope accord, you would go and use some of this heliotropin. But also it just so happens that the smell of heliotropin is this lovely kind of vanilla cherry smell. Now, the only problem with this stuff is that it's often quite restricted, and I believe that is because actual heliotropin is a precursor to a certain uh, illegal drug. Now, in order to get around that, there's something called heliotropin diethyl acetal, where essentially they've made some changes to the molecule so that you can't go and use it anymore to make that drug. And that allows you to actually go and buy it to use in perfumery. Now, I haven't smelled the real one. I've only smelled this one. Apparently, the downside of this DEA or diethyl acetal version is that it just doesn't quite smell so strongly. And you do notice that when you smell this heliotropin DEA. But still, nonetheless, it is a very lovely smell. It's this kind of slightly powdery, slightly vanilla, sweet kind of, I would say slightly floral, cherry-like um, smell. It's just very pleasant overall. Right, so next we have something called anisyl acetone. Now this one, if you go and look at the molecule, looks a bit more similar to something like raspberry ketone. And this one is, I would say, a general kind of fruity berry smell. It's got a little bit of a lipstick kind of smell. Um, but overall, it's fairly pleasant. I would say this one is not so overtly cherry, but it does give you that general kind of fruity red berry smell. You can also go and use this in other berries. For example, if you wanted to make a raspberry smell, if you wanted to go and make maybe a strawberry smell, something like that, you could go and use this. But if you wanna go and make a cherry smell, then this is one of the ones that you can use. Now, this one is a mid note. It lasts a reasonable, not a massive, but a reasonable amount of time and it doesn't have those sweet vanilla nuances, for example, like something like the veratraldehyde. So if you're looking to extend your cherry note in more of a, say, a lighter fruity berry scent and you don't want to go down the sweet vanilla route, then something like anisyl acetone could be quite useful. Finally, then, we have anisyl acetate, and this is essentially a relative of anisyl acetone. This time, they've just gone and made the acetate of it. If you don't know what that means, then just go check out my video on acetates from a while back. And this one smells pretty similar. 
Again, this one is a mid note, so it lasts a bit longer than some of your top notes. If you want to extend that cherry note down into the mid, you don't want to go with that sweet vanilla direction, this one could be useful. And this one just does smell a little bit different than the Anisol Acetone. So I would say this one is a little bit stronger. It's a little bit more cherry, actually. I'd say it's a little bit more in that direction. However, it does also have a very slight kind of soapiness to it. And that's probably not because it actually smells like soap, but it's probably because I would imagine this is used in various shampoos and things like that. And it's probably that I've slowly associated it with the smell of some of those home products. Nonetheless, it is a very nice smell. It's just, I think this is one you'd want to be careful with just because it's probably used quite a lot in those kind of um, maybe some more cheaper products like soaps and candles. So if you're going to go and use this in a fine fragrance perfume and you still want to make sure it smells uh, you know, nice and luxurious, I do think it could fit in for sure, but I just think you need to be careful how you use it, potentially uh, not using it too high or blending it nicely with other things. Nonetheless, it's a very useful uh, note. It's a very nice smelling note. And if you're looking to make a cherry accord, then this is definitely one that I would consider. Right, so that's pretty much it. I've just gone and dumped all of my secrets regarding cherry notes with you guys. So hopefully you can take something away from this and hopefully you can make good use of all that knowledge in your own perfumes. Took me a while to put together all those notes, but now, you know, amongst those notes, now I've kind of worked them out over the years. Um, I think they're a pretty good arsenal of notes if you're trying to deal with making a cherry accord or a cherry note in your perfume. I'm sure there are more because, you know, there's always more. But as far as I'm aware, those are the kind of good ones to use, the ones that I know about. And those ones have served me quite well. So hopefully they can be useful for you too. Now, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And if there's another note where you'd like me to go through the raw materials, which I know about for that kind of note or that category, then let me down in the comments. And if one of them is quite popular, then I'll try to go through that one sometime as well. Oh.